Well, hey, America, how we doing today? We are having an issue. I got an issue. Um, I had a couple issues with this truck since I started driving it. And uh, one of them kind of almost nipped me in the butt last night. Um, Got to open the hood here, show it to you. Uh, I'm at the repair shop. <laughs> yeah, something broke on the truck. And uh, as you can see, I, I've had to band-aid it a little bit. Do y'all notice anything different about a truck here? There's the turbo, there's the exhaust, there's the head, there's the strap. What? The strap? <laughs> yeah, I had to put a had to put a band-aid on the truck to get it home. Limp it home kind of thing. Um, I left the other day, went down to uh, uh, Eagle Pass. I got down to Uvalde, Texas, and uh, there was a train across the road. And that's a noisy truck. I'm out by the interstate, so sorry for the noise. Um, anyway, I'm driving down the road, and it, uh, there was a train across the road, and uh, so everybody come to a stop and uh, my fan kicked on, my uh, the engine fan kicked on, and I hear this, what in the world? So I jumped out and opened the hood real quick, and it, the fan is spinning around, as you can see right here, it chipped it out a little bit, just a little bit, okay? It was hitting right here, or actually it was hitting right here on the air conditioner, hit right up here. So what happened is, this this uh, alternator and that air conditioner are all on this bracket right here and if you as you can see there's a crack right here and it goes over and there's a crack right there and that completely broke loose and this whole unit here shifted forward and was touching the fan oops <laughs> yeah so anyway i thought well i got to get that away from the fan so I, I reached and grabbed a strap first i got out here i got to think well maybe i can pry something in here put a put a screwdriver or something in here well that ain't gonna stay so I thought, well, how can, how, ah, I got a strap. So I went and put a strap around the adjusting bolt right here. Ah, I can't see what you can see here. That adjusting bolt right there, and the strap goes around. I just went around the head, came back around behind, and right back up. Anyway, tightened it all up. That pulled it away, got me home. So now that I'm looking at it, I thought it was just this little bracket here, and we could just, you know, weld that up. But I see there's a big crack right here, too. So... Yeah, that's that whole bracket probably gonna replace it. I don't know. He might be able to weld it up. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so there's that. And then also I've been having trouble with the starter. Not the starter for say the solenoid on top of the starter. Uh, you go to turn the key and it just. I mean, it doesn't do anything. There's no click, no nothing. Well, right down here on the driver. Here's the driver's window, driver's door. Right here on the side of the motor down below. That's where the starter is down there. Well, if you can see this this little beer can shaped thing right here, the, the starter's great big, okay, down below. And this is the solenoid that sits on top of it. Nine times out of 10 on a starter, the starter doesn't go bad. It's the solenoid that goes bad. So they usually don't sell the starter, just the solenoid by itself or whatever. So you, you, you just replace the whole starter. Talked to my mechanic over here and he said he, he can get them from a guy that he, he takes these old ones and just rebuilds them. Okay, great. So we'll put a rebuilt starter on it. Uh, what else? Oh, down here are the remote lube. So you got your clutch linkages and all that. Well, one of them goes down to the uh, underneath the uh, bell housing area, and it goes up and, and uh, greases the throwout bearing. Uh, the throwout bearing is when you when you push the clutch in, your clutch pulls the uh, the, the linkages pull the clutch away from the, the pressure plate. And when it pulls away, it's, it's running on a bearing in there. And that bearing doesn't really use, it, it doesn't, it's not active unless you've got the clutch in. So it needs grease though. So anyway, can't grease that throw out bearing unless that fitting's on there. And he says he's got a fitting he'll put in there and reattach the hose and we'll be good there too. And also I've been having trouble with the fuel filter. Now, if you remember, we got the oil filter on your side. This is the primary fuel filter. And this is the secondary fuel filter or, uh, uh, water separator okay and when the fuel comes out of the motor out of the, the, the tank it comes up on this fuel line right here through this fuel line in here and this separates any big gunk and water then it goes over to the, the primary fuel filter and filters it even better and then it goes into the injectors okay this has been getting clogged up with these little little black flakes almost look like uh, 
like black confetti or or black cornflakes or something. I mean, much smaller, real little, little bitties. And uh, think of, uh, have you ever seen Goldschlager? They have the little gold flakes floating around in Goldschlager. Just make those black. And that's what this looks like. Well, it gets, the, it, it clogs up the, uh, uh, the filter and everything. Well, I think what it is, pretty sure what it is, is that fuel line, 17 year old fuel line, is getting old and it's deteriorating on the inside. And all these little flakes of, of uh, uh, fuel, uh, not fuel, rubber, are floating down and getting into that filter and, and clogging them up prematurely. So I got to take that off. So the other day, uh, this last week, I think it was Thursday, uh, I was down there in uh, Brownwood, pulled in and changed that filter real quick. So I grabbed another filter, pulled it off, and was changing it. And when it pull it out, you get a little air filter, air, 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 uh, air bubble in the fuel lines. So you go to start it, it wouldn't start, wouldn't start, you know. So you get out here, and this is the, the what they call the jack-off pump, okay? And then you just pull that out, and you, you you pump the fuel lines. It purges the air out of the fuel line, okay? So I'm out there doing all that, getting it all done, and, and uh, uh, went to start it again, and it just went nothing. Just the key is just completely dead. Oh, God. So I've got a pipe that I go over, and I reach down in here, and you just, on the top of that, solenoid you just give it a good little wrap you know and get up there and usually that breaks them loose they, what they do is they get old and they get sticky kind of gum up anyway fire it up well that means that solenoid's going bad therefore the starter is going bad therefore you just replace the damn thing so uh yeah it's a few little things that are uh, messed up oh another thing is this is another one I've, I've totally missed look at that the shock is completely worn out down here and this pin Okay, it bolts on on the inside, comes out, and that's you know, it's here's here's the replacement. I got it right here. Sorry, let me see here. There it is. Here's the replacement pin. So that pin will go in there like that through that hole and replace it. Okay, so take a guess, take a guess how much that little booger cost. Take a guess. I might tell you someday <laughs> yeah it's for a bolt a steel bolt unbelievably high priced so anyway it costs more than the shocks <laughs> so anyway um, I'm gonna uh, put new shocks on it put new put that pin in there throw up throw up bearing the fitting so I can grease it um, the uh, the plate that holds your alternator and all that fix that and new starter so we're uh, we're in the shop and I'm gonna go, Pam's gonna come over and pick me up here in a little bit and uh, I'm gonna head home and edit videos for you. So <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, other than that, it's done pretty good at riding good. I'm getting about seven and a half, uh, at, at 65 mile an hour, I'm getting about seven and a half mile a gallon. At 70, or, uh, if I slow down to about 62, it'll go up to uh, eight, point mile, eight mile a gallon. So, um, and then of course, if I go faster, like 70, 75, uh, it's probably down in the mid sixties. So speed kills, speed kills fuel mileage, you know, it really does. So anyway, I think that's just a quick update for you. Let you know, let you go. Just letting you know there, there's a few little minor things I found on this. So I got to fix. So we're, uh, we're good. Y'all be good. Take care. Ciao.